For number one, it says each of the letters A through J are printed on tiles that are placed in a hat. Andre selects a tile at random, then he replaces it. Claire then selects a tile at random. So if we're going to take a look at the letters A through J in each one, that is a total of, e of 10 letters. Okay, so we have 10 letters in each one. So what is the probability that Andre selects a B? Well, there's one B out of 10. So that's a one out of 10 probability um, or 0.1. Then Andre puts the B back into the letters. So Claire has the same letters to choose from. So what is the probability that she selects a B? And that is going to be one out of 10 as well or 0.1. What is the probability that they both select a B? So that Andre selects a B and then Claire also selects a B. So if you think about the sample space, um, remember, so the first selection would be A, then Claire could choose the letters A, B, C, D. She could choose any of these, right? So if we're thinking about writing out the whole sample space, um, for each letter, they could each choose the other one as well. So our sample space would look something like this just for the first letter being an A. Then we would repeat this and we'd have for the B and then we'd have each of the options, C each of the options. So we'd have 10 choices here and 10 here. So there's going to be a sample space of 100 outcomes. And then only one of those is going to have the option where they both chose B. So that's going to be a 1 in 100 chance, um, which would be a 0 0.01. Are the events of Andre selecting a tile and then Claire selecting a tile dependent or independent? So these are going to be independent because it doesn't matter um, what one does. So independent, um, because the selecting of the tile doesn't impact the other. All right, then number two, the Bulldogs have won approximately 67% of their 30 baseball games this season. The Bulldogs won nine of the 10 games they played when Diego was starting pitcher. Are the events the Bulldogs win the game, okay, which was the 67%, the, and the um, event the Bulldogs win the game when Diego is starting pitcher, which is when they won nine out of 10 games, are they dependent or independent? So let's write out the probability just that they win was 67%, okay, or 0.67 as a decimal if we want to write it that way. Then the probability um, that they win when we know that Diego is pitching was 9 out of 10, which is a decimal of 0.9. So since these two um, probabilities are different, we know that the events are dependent. Okay, because the, pro the probabilities change or the probabilities are not the same. Number three, describe two events that are independent and explain your reasoning. So this could be a whole host of things. Um, easiest for me to just kind of write out would be something like rolling a four on a number cube, then flipping a coin and getting a heads. Okay, so rolling the die and flipping a coin have no bearing on each other. So you could even do rolling a four on a number cube, then rolling another four. Okay, again, independent events. The probability of rolling a four here is one in six, and here is one in six. You could do something with some type of spinner, and then you just draw out the spinner. You could talk about different numbers or letters in a bag, drawing that, putting it back. 
flipping a coin, whatever. You could even do flipping a coin a few times. Okay, so flipping a coin and getting heads. Then flipping the coin and getting tails. So lots of different events that could be independent of each other. Number four, the table displays the number and type of tickets bought for a baseball tournament held on a Saturday or a Sunday. The addition rule. Um, so let's look at the addition rule here and show how it applies to these two events that um, a, a children's ticket is bought and um, the day of the tournament is on a Sunday. So our um, A event is going to be a child's ticket. So we're going to be doing the probability of a child's ticket plus our B event is that it's on Sunday. So probability of a child plus probability of Sunday minus the probability of both a child and Sunday. And so if we kind of take a look at these, so a children's ticket is here. And so that's um, 41. Okay, and there were... Um, if we add up all of these numbers here, 27 plus 14 plus 41 plus 29, there were 111 total tickets. And so the probability that it is a child's ticket is going to be 41 out of 111. And then the probability that it's on Sunday is going to be um, 14 plus 29 out of 111, so 43 out of 111. And then we would subtract the one that is both a child's ticket and Sunday, so that would be 14 tickets. And we'll see that if we do 41 plus 43 minus 14, we get 70. So 70 out of 11 would be the probability of child's or Sunday. And then we could also just um, take a look at actually adding these. So 27, 14, and 29 looking in this table. And if we add those together, so 27, 14, and 29, we also see that it's 70 out of the total of 111. Number five, um, a researcher surveys 200 randomly selected college students to determine the number of majors, education and mathematics majors. So 16% of the students surveyed are education majors. 6% of the students surveyed are math majors. And 2% of the students are both education and math majors. So what would be the probability that they're education or math majors? So remember, this is going to be the probability of the education plus the probability of the math minus the probability of those who are both education and math majors. So probability of um, education was 16% plus mathematics was 6% and then minus the 2% that were both. And so 16 plus six is 22, minus two gives us 20% are either education or math majors. Number six, 100 students were asked two survey questions. Do you have a garden or are you a gamer? How many students surveyed have a garden? So as long as they are in this blue circle, they have a garden. And so that is 12 students had um, a garden. The table shows the preferences of 40 students surveyed about the design of a new t-shirt for students who are graduating this year. What is the probability that a student selected at random preferred a pink t-shirt with long sleeves. So they needed a pink t-shirt and they wanted it to have long sleeves. So who's in both of those um, was five out of 
40 students. Write a formula that could be used to find the area of this sector. Um, and so you could do this whether this was in radians or it was in degrees. So if we looked at it for if this angle was in degrees, remember we would be looking at the sector area being part of the full circle. Okay, so if it's in degrees, we'd be looking at it being part of 360 degrees and then multiplying by the total area. And so that would be a formula there. Um, if it's in radians, we could look at it instead as part of the angle being part of 2 pi, since 2 pi is the whole circle in radians, and then multiplying by the area formula. And in this one, we have um, the pi's that cancel out. So our arc length would be equal to theta times r squared divided by 2 or the formula as we learned it, one half times theta times the radius squared. So either of those would be fine depending on the angle that you're using. Number nine, find the missing measurements in the triangle. So we see that we have a right triangle and we have two of the angles given to us. So we can find this third angle by just doing 90 minus 58 and that will give us 32 degrees for that leftover angle there. Then we'll wanna be setting up some trig functions to find the others. I'm just gonna call this X and this Y. And so if I um, identify this as the angle that I'm using, I could say that this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. So that is gonna be a tangent function. So we would have tangent of 58 is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So we would multiply that three up and we would do three times the tangent of 58 equals X. And then you just need your calculator um, to calculate that. So tangent of 58 is one point six zero zero three so multiply that times three and we would get x equals four point eight then we could set up a um, cosine function with the um, adjacent side and the hypotenuse so we could do the cosine of 58 is equal to 3 over y. So I would multiply the y up. And then we could divide by cosine to get y by itself. So now we would just want to type in 3 divided by um, the cosine of 58. And you would get 5.6 six for that or 5.7 if we rounded to the nearest tenth um and so let me just do that again for you so this three divided by cosine of 58 if you want to type in the cosine of 58 first um that would be 0.52 so we're really doing three divided by the decimal 0.5299 so you could um kind of do it in steps that way if you wanted and then do three divided by 5.299 and get 0.5.66 again.